I gotta tell you, I was really surprised about the amount of interest these little magnetic locks generated. Um, I did a, a video on this, I think, about a week ago. And I'm also surprised about the misconceptions about how to hack them. Um, there were so many comments that said, those are super easy to, I mean, very knowledgeable sounding statements. Those are really easy to crack. All you need is some magnetic paper. So, yeah, it's not true. Let's talk a little bit about magnetic paper and how it can help us, but certainly it's not going to help us with just a lock. So let's talk about how magnetic paper works. So let me grab this little magnet. I'm going to lay him on the side of my palm there, and I'm going to take our magnetic paper and just lay him over the top of it. And right away, you can see as it moves around, you can see the fields that are represented by the black and, of course, the magnet is in the middle. What this tells us is the orientation of the magnet, which is which way north and south are oriented, but what it doesn't tell us is which is north and which is south. Now when we flip the magnetic, uh, the magnet up on its end like that, and again take our paper, we see a black dot. And that tells us that either north or south are shooting up straight through the paper, and then the other polarity is shooting through the palm of my hand. So very cool, but it doesn't tell us the orientation of the magnet. Likewise, taking the lock with magnetic paper, um, yeah, there are no detectable levels of magnetism, at least with this paper, inside of this lock. Nothing. So this will not help us. The only way magnetic paper can help us is to take the key. If you get a quick look at the key, you can real, real quick figure out how many magnets and their orientation. And again, let me find a clean edge. We're just going to slide them on there like so. And what that tells us, let me get my fingers out of the way, is there are a total of four magnets inside of here. So we got two at the top, and we got two down at the bottom space a little bit further apart. So kind of a cool indicator of where they are. But with four magnets, two orientations each, we got, I don't know, 16 possible combinations of orientation. So, yeah, that is not going to help us a little bit. So again, let's take a look at the inside of the key. So if this is the key, and it, it, uh, this is uh, with the foil removed from the top, we see our four magnets. It's exactly the same. It's the same. This is the extra key, by the way. And it's ingenious the way they did this. They have these clover leaf cutouts, and inside the clover leaf, they put a magnet in one of the orientations. So you got five o'clock, eleven o'clock, three o'clock, eleven o'clock. They put the magnets in there, and they fill up the epoxy. They let it dry, and then bang, there's your key. So there's any number of different keys because you can use all those positions. So let's look at it from a practical perspective. Um, when you put magnets close together, they like to they like to orient themselves and then stick together. Now they're going to track north to south. Uh, light poles are going to repel. So if I take this magnet off the top of here, and I'm trying to position him inside of that clover leaf in a very you know in an adjacent cylinder, if I try to put him in there and before the glue dries, that magnet is going to pull itself out of position and it's going to do its best to flip over. So I can tell you we can greatly narrow down the combinations here. I can tell you and I, that these two magnets, if that is north, then that is south, and vice versa, and the same for these guys, because they're in fairly close proximity. And that way, when I put the magnets in there, they're probably going to stay pretty well located. They're not going to try to snap to each other while that glue dries. Okay, let's take that information, what we got, and let's break our little magnets apart here. And I'm going to orient these guys side by side so that the north and the south are here, and there's a north and south on the bottom as well. Set him aside and hope it doesn't snap to anything. We're going to do the same thing with this guy. Again, north and south. And let's get, let me set him over there so again it doesn't snap. Let's get one more look at our key to get the spacing down. And remember, it's going to be reversed when we flip this key over. So we got roughly a half inch from the top. We got two and then roughly a half inch from the bottom, I guess. We have two more. All right, I think I got it. We'll try it. Let's take this guy, set him about a half inch, about right there. Let's take this guy. Uh, I think that was right. I've already lost the, lost the bubble here. So if we flip it over, it's going to be on the left. Glad we looked at that. So he's going to be like that. And he's going to be the same, perhaps a little bit off. But all right, that's about right. Um, I don't feel any influence on the inside of there. I'm going to try to pull it, see if we got it right the first time, and we don't. All right, so that tells me the orientation of one or both of these is wrong, but because of the way these magnets attract, there's only four possible combinations. So let's do it. Let's take this guy and flip him around. So we're basically switching the north and the south orientations. 
put him right there like he was and give it a little tug. And again, wrong answer. All right, so he must be wrong. I didn't have an idea we are going to try all four combinations. And there it is. So now we've got them oriented correctly. I guess that's how you hack these things. Yes, not just using magnetic paper. All right, so you know, the other huge question or number of questions was how does it work on the inside? And I don't have a clue. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it open. I'm going to break off this ledge. Let's pry that off and figure out how that works on the inside of there without having magnets. All right, this really turned out to be an interesting little mechanism. Uh, pretty simple, but here's how it works. Remember this uh, locking shackle is spring-loaded in reverse. It pulls itself closed. And I wondered about that, and now I know why. Because when you pull on this, the locking shackle can't come open because the locking pawl is in the cutout. And the way that you move that out of the cutout is on the back here, there's a little lever. And every time you pull on that, that little lever is trying to push that locking pawl in that direction. It can't move up because these four little dancing posts have to line up perfectly with the holes inside of this locking pawl. So what this tells me is, you know, this factory probably has 20 or 30 different locking pawls, all with those holes in different places, and that would constitute different keying. So what we need to do is line up those posts with those holes so that this thing can retract. So I'm going to take this and slide it on there. Watch what happens to those posts. I'll hold it up close. And when you slide that on there, it influences those at different angles because these little rosettes pull the top of those posts at different angles. And again, lines up pretty much perfectly. Make sure that's in the groove. And then when you pull, they line up and you should be able to get an open. There we go. So very cool. So how do we whip it? Well, you guys saw. We, we can read the key with magnetic paper and then get magnets roughly in the same place. And these little magnets do a pretty good job of aligning those posts. But, you know, a lot of luck's involved. If you're going to slide it back and forth like I've done to kind of, you know, magnetically bump it, you can do that. And just keep pulling as you slide that thing back and forth. And hopefully eventually you get in. Or you can go with a magnum. Now, here's what I didn't realize. When I use the lamello, and I'm losing it, uh, rotating it at very low speed... Those, I'm going to hold it up closer to the camera, those little dancing guys, they're moving quite vigorously, even at low speed. And I'm going to put my thumb here because if I don't at high speed, it'll pull all the guts out. So when it goes at high speed, it's almost, they move so fast you can't see it. It's just incredible how quickly those little guys move around inside of there. So the limiting factor is not the lamello. In fact, the limiting factor is your finger. How quickly can you pull it? Because literally, you know, I joked about that being a bump finger. That's exactly what's happening. Every time you pull, you're hoping ho uh, that those posts are lining up with those holes. It's probably lining up 50 times for every once that I pull and get an open. So, yeah, it's probably a lot more effective than what we realize. Anyway, guys, there you go. The magnetic lock. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. All right, just for fun, let's see, let's see how this lamello tool works. Again, for the, you guys who haven't seen it, we have giant magnets on the inside of there, four of them opposing, and then when you pull the trigger, it spins, that's counterclockwise, and then reversing drill, you can do it the other way, and we can also look at the end of it. So a lot of different ways to spoof magnetic fields with this thing, and you can really see them when you take the magnetic paper and you put it up there. So now, clockwise, this is two. So we're, we're fluctuating that magnetic field hundreds of times per second as they spin around. And if I want to, I can put it on the end, and we can do that as well. So just a very powerful magnetic field, like a magnetic storm, I think is how I defined it in the original video. That's how we spoof that magnetic lock.